Well, the next time you want to complain about your commute to work, think of Mapundo Kalunga. He's the only professional boxer fighting out of Whitehorse. His commute to get to his matches is about 5,000 kilometers. CBC's Danielle Dontremont has more. How did that feel? That was amazing. Mapanda Kalunga is a fighter in every sense of the word. He grew up in a refugee camp in Tanzania, and that's where he first fell in love with boxing. And seeing that as a little kid gathered up all these refugees around a little TV, a little square piece TV uh, broadcasting the fight, <coughs> seeing the reaction when he knocked out uh, Francis Bolton, I think it was the sixth round, how everybody got up and they were so excited. Me as a kid seeing that and seeing how this moment made, literally made everything stop that was happening, the good and the bad, just for this moment. It was so, like, it was so important, it was so significant. It always stuck with me, you know? And that, seeing that as a kid, I was like, I, I want that. that. That's the feeling. I want that glory, let's say. I want that glory. I'm good to go, man. Let's do this. <laughs> Mapanda's search for glory has been a long one. He started boxing at 16 after he moved to Newfoundland. Eventually, he became a pro boxer and was fighting in Toronto. But almost two years ago, he moved to Whitehorse full time. Because there are no other pro boxers fighting out of the territory, he needs to fly all the way to Toronto for matches. Other boxers in the territory are grateful that he is here too. But with so few resources in the Yukon, it's a challenge to get the training that he needs. He's on another level that nobody's on at the moment. And, you know, it, it's unfortunate that he has to fly all the way to Ontario to actually get the, the training he needs in order to prepare for his fights. Um, you know, I wish we could have more within the Yukon, but again, there's just nobody at that level to keep him as competitive as he needs to be in order to succeed with his boxing. UConn Boxing doesn't have a training venue right now. They were in peak fitness for about 15 years until it shut down during COVID. So, in order to properly train for fights, Maponda flies down to Toronto one month in advance just to make sure he gets in time to train at a proper gym. He even sleeps there just to save time. But he says... It's all worth it to live in Whitehorse and to be around a city that he says gives him the strength he needs to keep fighting. Danielle Dontremont, CBC News, Whitehorse. And that was the CBC's Danielle Dontremont. And since she first reported this story, there's been an update. The Ponda is now trying to organize a professional boxing match in the Yukon. It would be the first one in that territory in a long time. She joins me now to explain. So first of all, Danielle, tell us why Maponda wants to organize a fight in the Yukon. Well, Hillary, obviously having the match here would cut down on his commute quite a bit, but he also loves the Yukon, and he says he wants to give back to a place that has given him so much strength. And right now, he's up for a Canadian title. Maponda is on an eight-fight winning streak and is ranked second in his division in the country. So he wants to have the fight right here in Whitehorse on his home turf. And if he's successful at getting this match organized, it would be a big deal, not just professionally, but also historically. And that's because there hasn't been a professional boxing match here in the territory since around 1906. So he says he also wants to make history happen. Wow, so over 100 years, that's a pretty long time. Um, what is the history of boxing there in the Yukon? Yeah, a long time indeed. Well, the Yukon actually used to be a hub for professional boxing on an international level, specifically in Dawson City. The first major unrecorded fight was in 1898. It was between a former Commonwealth champion named Frank Slavin and a bartender in Dawson City named Frank Harvey. It was supposed to go 18 rounds, but it only went six, Hillary, and that's because the boxers actually stopped early to watch the fans who were fighting outside the ring. And the fights were pretty brutal. One boxer even offered a reward to crowd members who would return his teeth. 
It's hard to overemphasize how big of a deal this sport was in the Yukon. They even had a facility in Dawson City that was capable of sitting five thousand people and people came from all over there were also many people involved in promoting the fights one went on to build a little venue in new york city you might have heard of it it's called madison square gardens so pretty amazing some of the names and talents that were in dawson and made it the north american and even one of the world capitals of boxing during the gold rush Wow, some pretty uh, pretty amazing history there. Um, so what will it take for Maponda to bring professional boxing back to the territory? Yeah, well, ultimately, one of the biggest barriers that Maponda and his team are facing right now boiled down to Canada's criminal code. Section 83 says that anyone who engages in a, quote, prize fight is guilty of an offense punishable by summary conviction. There are exceptions to this rule, of course, but for professional boxing, the contest needs to be approved by a commission or a similar body that has to be approved by the province or territory's legislature. And in the Yukon, we actually don't have a boxing commission at all. I spoke with Ranch Pillay about this. He is the Minister of Economic Development, and he's been in touch with Maponda's team about organizing the event. This is what he had to say. Looking through the legislation that we have in place right now um, and making sure that that we can work within that legislation or if there's something we need to do to be able to host an event like this, you know, it would be um, probably inappropriate for me to tie that to a timeline because I don't I, I don't believe but we don't know if there's legislative changes. Does it need an order in council? Like it's it's it, it could be actually pretty uh, a significant undertaking. Um, just based on the legislation that's been in place for you know decades uh, around this conversation. So yeah, we're just looking at what are the avenues that we could um, pursue um, to support um, an event like this. So obviously, Hillary, there are big barriers to making this happen. But Maponda and his team are still hopeful that the match will take place. And if there's anything I've learned about Maponda, he hasn't let big barriers stop him before. So he doesn't plan on throwing in the towel anytime soon. All right, Danielle, I'm sure we'll be following this closely. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.